Hey, thanks for joining us for the Monster at the End of this podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Chris. And again, this is the just going to be a podcast about the episodes of Supernatural. We're going to discuss plot, lore, character development, cinematography, anything we really want to, criticisms, and whatever else comes up. So today's episode we're going to be talking about is Season 1, Episode 2, Wendigo, written by Eric Kripke, Ron Milbar, and Terry Hughes Burton, and directed by David Nutter. Yes, and the synopsis of the episode is Sam and Dean make a stop at Blackwater Ridge and end up helping a young woman and her brother find their other brother who mysteriously disappeared while on a camping trip in the woods. And that is uh, from IMDb. So the plot of this episode we felt was really like definitely a filler episode. I felt like it provided a lot of um, that drive for Sam to like continue on with Dean. Yeah, I think we did have some good Sam Dean conversation, especially in the woods later yeah. on when he's telling him, Towards "Why are end. we doing this?" You know, we should be so finding Dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think yeah, we do get a good amount of Sam Dean interaction that continues the storyline yeah. in a way, but it is a filler. I episode. I just think it's really meant for like Sam to kind of understand like the importance of doing this job right and it's so the audience can understand the importance of doing this job too mm-hmm. so, especially because, how dean feels right episode two audience is still going along trying to figure out these two brothers um my next comment on plot was when we reach the man that was attacked with his family in the cabin by the wendigo all those years ago um So we see that the Wendigo attacked all three members of the camping party. It attacked um, the two parents. So I was just really confused. Why would they, why would it leave him alive? Because he wasn't big enough to eat or just for the sake of plot. So there was that extra person there. I'm not, I definitely would just say that's probably for plot. So if it made a little more sense, I get he had the scar, but how even would if he, it like, gave him the scar, how would he why, survive? Why would right. it? Why would it be like, so oh, fast. cool? I scratched you a little. Now yeah. I'm gonna leave you here. Yeah, just that didn't make sense to me. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit weird. Um, so again, yeah, the plot. I think it was really just mostly based on getting the brothers on the same page to continue doing these cases while finding dad and the thing that killed. Jess. Right. Hinting at a little more plot moving along. Uh, the, we see the plot moving along more. However, we do see the aspect that they want us to realize that this is going to be like introducing new monsters right. basically every episode. Oh, yeah. We, so we can catch up with the hundred years of lore. Yeah, we got like a lot of more information about monsters in this episode when they're trying to figure out what the Wendigo is. So we see a lot of Dad's journal and we see a lot of other supernatural creatures that they haven't gone into yet, but we're getting like little sneak peeks into all the other creatures in this universe that we might be able to see, as well as like some of the protection symbols that they were doing on like in the dirt. Right. They were even talking about what they could be hunting. Mm -hmm. So we know they know we know they've already had experience with some of these things. Mm hmm. So since we're on the topic of lore, yeah, we'll just we'll move right to, into it. So the Wendigo in the Supernatural episode is said to kind of show up every 23 years. And they a Wendigo is a cannibalistic monster that um, has superhuman speed, strength, can mimic voices, and it's um, only destroyed by fire. And the name translates to Evil That Devours. And they talked about how it was really, really related to the Donner Party. So yeah, because they were a whole family that got trapped up there and had to go to cannibalism to survive. To survive, and that's that's how Dean explains a Wendigo becomes what it is. is yeah, it has to be a person first. Yeah, that's the main, typically the main what causes it. So that was a really interesting like bit of lore on the Wendigo that we got, and then we also have some information. Um, from the official Warner Bros. Supernatural website before it was um, turned over into the CW website. 
they had a pad of definitions which uh, was included supernatural phenomena and terminology which was updated until season two episode 18 and so they included a bunch of stuff um, more like in-depth information about the creatures they were using up until the last century some native americans actively believed in and searched for wendigos one of the most famous wendigo hunters was jack fiddler fiddler was a cree indian who claimed that he killed at least 14 of the creatures in his lifetime in october 1907 fiddler and his son joseph were tried for the murder of a cree woman both men pleaded guilty but claimed that the murder was necessary because she had been possessed by the spirit of a wendigo Fiddler claimed that the woman was on the verge of transforming entirely into a Wendigo and that she had to be killed before she murdered other members of the Cree tribe. Fiddler was ultimately imprisoned for this murder at the age of 87. Despite his alleged success, successes, Wendigos are notoriously hard to kill. So now we're on to character development, one of my favorite. Yeah, this one is, of your favorite topics. This is definitely to... one of my favorite parts. Right. Um I'm a really big Dean fan, so, like, I thought this had a lot of Dean. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it had a lot of both, but this one, I think you saw a lot of Dean um, showing, like, he is daddy's good little soldier. He is, again, just doing the job, going to the coordinates dad told them, no questions asked. Right, and he's doing what dad told them, saving people, hunting, hunting things. things along the way like yes dad is important to find but we have time to help this family and that's what dad's taught us to do right and then we also see dean again um you know he sacrifices himself and that you know that's the entire show that's That's the entire show (laughs) dean lying on a grenade yeah for sam his brother his younger brother sammy yes little brother sammy gotta protect him so we saw that he he's cocky as hell, goes right for the Wendigo, and that's Dean as a character, and that's what we see early on. Um, I also really thought that it was really interesting for this episode because I felt like, as from what we know in Supernatural, their roles were definitely reversed. Like, for this episode, I felt like Dean was really, like, logical and thinking yeah. about things, but Sam was more like, shoot first, ask questions later. Yes, as- Especially because the series has ended and we do know yeah. further character development. But yes, we do see that. That's completely the opposite of yeah. how they are. And I mean, in the first episode, you see cocky Dean, especially yeah. when he's handling the cop. So this is an obvious switch mm-hmm. a little bit for but them. But yeah, you can see like Sam's going through like Sam Sam's Jess. going through it. So that le- leads into what well, I had a big comment that I think that really shows like, Sam kind of breaking down like that, I think that really shows how similar to John he is. Oh, yeah. Because he was not interested in hunting. He was just doing the one case. And then his girl was killed. And the same thing as John, he dropped everything, and that became his life. It's the same thing it overtook just him. years later. He, it's the same thing He didn't care later. about anything. He was completely consumed. Focused on finding dad so they could find whatever killed Jess. Exactly, instead of doing all of this other stuff. Realizing that they could help these people get their brother back, and he would want that too if it was his brother. So For, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really liked this also because um, Dean, like, didn't even think to question, like... Because Sam said why are we letting Haley and her brothers go in the woods? And Dean's like, what are we going to do? Tell her not to. Tell her not to. It's her own brother. Yeah, because Dean, like, would never even think to stop somebody, because he would never be stopped. Let anybody tell him, oh, you can't come. So I liked, I really liked that, like, parallels between Dean and Haley. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I thought those were really, really cool. Um, Dean is super smart in unconventional ways. (laughs) I am very angry at how many people call Dean stupid, but um, he uses the M and M's as breadcrumbs, yes. which is smart. This but is when we had, we had another different co- comments. We had a confusing I, thing. I immediately saw Dean's M and M's when he brought them out in front of Haley, and I was like, "Oh, Dean, you know the junk food loving, funny Dean that I like to see as a fan that I'm in love with." You know mm-hmm. the funny 
loves to watch Dr. Sexy yeah. Dean. Like, I saw that, and I was like, oh, oh, that's nice to have a little hint of his, that side. And you're immediately like, oh, he's so smart. And I'm just like, oh, he's such a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he... There's definitely different ways. You can see it both different ways. He's cocky and he's like flirty with the M and M's and Haley, but then he, that also saves their life. Right, it does because it is, yeah, as you would say, Chekhov's gun. Yeah, I it's Chekhov's gun. It, it was necessary. Those were the breadcrumbs. We did have a question about that because the when Digo moves so fast, I don't understand how yeah. Dean was like just dropping the because they were pretty at, like spaced out in like yeah, little and it didn't look like he had that many left in the bag and he was eating them yeah so, so um, yeah some he questions just had an for unlimited amount of m and yeah i don't know how like that thing moves like quicker than the speed of light throwing up the m and because yes, it was going that must so be fast it. that must be it mm-hmm. <laughs> motion sickness saved his life for sure so we also see when it comes down to dean and sam's relationship and again we know the rest of the series because it has ended but um we see dean addressing sam's anger issues where's that mindset later on in the series that's that's completely killed off it's so sad that so much has happened to him that he can't even think that way for himself that he can't even think oh i can think this way too and get over my own anger at this point Oh, because Dean just focuses on Sam. Yes, because Sam, yeah, he, uh, Dean's like, oh, address your anger, Sam. We Dean's, can get Dean over knows, this. Dean knows he's too far gone. He knows. He's, he always says that. He's like, I'm always going to die at the barrel of a gun, end of a knife. Don't get me fucking started. How not- old is he at the beginning of this? He's 26. You're 26, man. <laughs> so, yeah, that's really sad. But, yeah, that's yeah, really interesting to see. Uh, uh, we see that Dean... Um, again, won't show weakness in front of Sam, or will try anything not to show weakness in front of Sam, like, when he is clearly in pain when they rescue uh, them from the Wendigo, he he's like, yeah, I'm fine, like, ugh. not showing that he's in pain in front of his brother. Yeah. Um, I really thought it was funny how Dean uh, was just telling Sam, like, how you can't keep all this anger bottled up inside you, it's gonna kill you, and that's literally Dean's number one personality trait. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Dean, stop describing yourself. That you're literally describing yourself. Dean Winchester has entered the chat. Dean is um, such a hypocrite. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Um, now we're into cinematography. I uh, also another aspect Lauren does love. I, oh yeah, I I love a lot of this stuff. <laughs> um, I thought it was really cool how this episode is super dark, but the only like, light part of the episode was the dream sequence. Right, and I think that shows a little of Sam's mindset throughout. Because I do really think that this show set out to be focused on Sam. Oh, yeah. And Sam was supposed to be the main character. He was. He was was number one on call sheet. Right. So I think that's supposed to also mimic his outlook and his views on the current situation, too, Mm -hmm. and how... He would rather be living a normal right. life. In the bright world. In the bright world. With the possibility of Jess, yeah. of seeing Jess, even if she were dead, but still not being a part of this and not having to deal with this. And it was so bright and clear and distinct. And and you and, could tell something was off. Right. This is not supernatural. Right. You know when else I could tell something was off? When you could see a legit man wearing a green <laughs> screen suit. <laughs> Yeah, run I mean, through the trees. I mean, okay. at a very slow pace for a Wendigo being a super fast. Yeah, as if you could outrun me. Yeah, so the. <laughs> I mean, Twilight. it's two thousand five. Okay, this the editing and special effects aren't the greatest. I think okay, they did a pretty good job for what they had with like the latex burning at the end. That was pretty sweet. Oh yeah, and the the setup for the whole mine. Oh, yeah, being, creepy. I like it. Yeah, it's and it creepy. sets up a little background, too, because now you can think, oh, it's in a mine. Maybe this person was a miner. Oh, yeah, you got all got, this stuff to think about. Right, so it leaves a lot of open-ended for people like me who like to fill in gaps uh, yeah. for writers. Well, and I also really like um, how you almost never see the Wendigo, almost ever. Right. Like, it's only, like, right at the very end, you see, like, the up-close of its face, but it gives you, like, that effect of, 
like the movie The Thing, mm -hmm. where you never see the monster. You just are always like hearing it and seeing little like specks Snippets of it, and it's of, like yeah. it makes it so much scarier. Almost like bird box because you don't know what yeah. they're trying to. You have face. no idea what it is, and you just like you're scared of it. You too. just see the damage that it's doing. Right. Although I will say that when um, Roy mm -hmm. was killed, I did see a glimpse, and it kind of looked like Slender Man <laughs> popping out of that tree to snap his neck. Oh my. S that was the only like <laughs> that was kind of it. creepy i did see the hands and that was creepy yeah it kind of looked like slender man because it was an long Just, skinny it has pale such arm long that's mm -hmm. one of the things that's so creepy the appendages are so mm -hmm. like long oh when it was walking in the cavern the first time right, yes with the light sh i was like oh, the no. silhouette of it yeah that's creepy so yeah i really liked that you didn't see much of the wendigo but Basically, what you did see completely resembled the drawing you saw in John's journal. And, it, like, that is a perfect... The John's journal is the perfect representation of what the Wendigo looks like and what you saw. Because that drawing... John's journal will keep them alive. If yes. They just need to keep it. It'll keep them alive. Oh, yeah. And now, moving on to literary devices type things, like parallels foreshadowing stuff... So we already mentioned Chekhov's gun with the M&M's. Yep, you see it and, oh, it's conveniently used later mm -hmm. on. So yeah. I, again, love it. I, I, oh, oh, yeah. I love it. Well, and it is, like, it really does set up, because Dean eating junk food is a big staple of the show. Like, it's a fun part of his personality, so it starts there. Yeah, and we see it second episode, so that's great. Mm-hmm. So I really liked the parallels between Haley and Dean watching over, like, their their younger siblings, and they kind of were, like, both cocky, had a similar, uh, like, personality to them. Right, and determined to do whatever yeah. they need to to yeah, help their family. Really strong-minded. Right. Strong-willed. and Family body, though, because she's caring for her yes. two brothers, and yeah. Dean they took depend care on her, of, and... Sam depended on Dean. Right. Dean raised took his brother. Care of Sam. It, I love the. It was really great parent walls. And normally, a lot of like Dean's love interests throughout the show, I hate. I think they're terribly done. And this one, I actually would have thought. I thought they had more chemistry than a lot of mm -hmm. the ones that they give to Dean. So that uh, one episode chemistry. Yeah, like they're often terrible. We'll get into that later. But um, yeah, I thought this one they had a lot of chemistry, and I really liked seeing them together. And I thought that could have been. Cool to see her more. Um, I didn't have anything else really for, like, techniques type thing. No. Um, so now we can go on to questions and criticisms. One thing I had that was, like, big is they always talk about you never can, like, reveal the supernatural. No, they don't want to bring anyone else into this horrible light. And like, then, they don't want to be in it. And then they just... The, it, Sam's like, you want to tell her? He's like, yeah. I'll yeah, like, it just talks we'll to We'll walk Haley. away and tell her. Like, like he... Yeah. It's okay. Like, I'll handle it. What? <clears throat> yeah. Bring so many innocent people in. She's going to have nightmares the rest of oh, her yeah. life. Um, well, her brother dies in uh, season eight. <laughs> the Wendigo. Yeah. Well, that's Crowley's fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is Crowley's fault. So, yeah. But, so that was um, funny to me. And then we had one other question. Comment, criticism. Uh, why was the Wendigo taking so long to try and kill Sam and Haley and her brothers? It it took so long, so Dean had the opportunity yeah. to kill it. Like when it's it was the just fastest like slowly creature, inching like, up. To I know kill that them. I know that your brother is coming, and I must go slow for plot. So and here like, we are. It's literally the one of the fastest, one of the fastest <laughs> most creatures. skilled hunters next to In Edward the, Cullen. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so that was that was just funny for right. us. Um, so now just for other comments, uh, that we had for the episode. The survivor, um, we did bring him up earlier in the episode, because, you know, why was he a survivor mm -hmm. anyway? But, um, the older gentleman that was attacked by the Wendigo, I thought it was a good, um, actor choice, or, um, good technique on the actor's part, because he had a really nice smoker voice, and... I would definitely be smoking after something like that happened to me. Mm -hmm. So it was, <laughs> it may be real or it may be a realistic touch due to casting or on the actor's standpoint. So I thought it was just a really nice, it was a really good touch to add. Yeah, I did like that too. I thought he was a pretty good choice. 
And it was just a, such a small character addition, mm-hmm. too. I like those little... I think, uh, like, a lot of the actors that they choose... I mean, some of them are terrible. I mean, over 15 seasons, some of the side actors are awful. But then you also get really good, like, really actors good side here and actors, there. actors, and then, you know... That, who move on to go do bigger things, and you're like, holy shit, they were in an episode of Supernatural. Right. And it's crazy. Yes, we've seen a lot of yeah. Supernatural actors and other Other things. stuff, yeah. so... That's pretty interesting. I loved the... Uh, we had the good BM scene at the campfire, the uh, boy melodrama. The- Mm-hmm. boy melodrama scene um i think that's probably Moments. like one of the first big ones that they have and that's you know when they talk about the family business saving people hunting things why we do what we do yeah so i mean right. sitting by the campfire like just having a moment mm-hmm. so me and you recently for one of my classes uh you didn't have to watch but i had to watch yeah um Grizzly Man for one of my classes. Good by, film, good film. Uh, Werner, Werner, Herzog. Werner Herzog. Really great director. Uh, it was a really great film. It's on uh, Netflix to any of those who want to watch it. But it gave me um, a really big vibe of, vibe of that. Right, because you're going out into the wilderness. You it, It's bear country. That's Right, the ranger said, oh, he'll be back on this date, so we don't need to check yet. Yeah, and that's that's what it's like in... When you're, like, in the Alaska, Alaska right. hunting. Right, they were saying and, with Grizzly Man, he didn't know to be worried. So when he came back and found yeah. the camp devastated, he was shocked and he didn't know when it had happened. Yeah, so mm-hmm. It's crazy. But, yeah, I I thought that was um, just a lot. It, it reminded me a lot of that. And right. So that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, one last thing I had uh, to state was a little tweet from Eric Kripke. On um, February 7, 2019, he posted original pitches for the first five episodes. Um, and for this one, it some of the quotes that he had stated in it were that it would be the Blair Witch type episode. And this feels like a good opportunity for a Dean storyline as the self-proclaimed lone wolf must lead and even rely upon the vulnerable, t- vulnerable townsfolk to survive. So we can see, like, from the beginning, this episode was to really show a lot about Dean, um, who he is as a character. And I guess that makes sense why Sam, it wasn't super, like, focused Focused as much on on Sam. Sam. Because that's not who Sam really is. He's going through something right now. Right, yeah. And we have to get a little Dean in there if he's going to be in the show. (laughs) Like, he's... But that is really, like, that's Dean. The self-proclaimed lone wolf, but he has to rely on the town's... townspeople so grade time any other comments krista actually um and you know i just want to say good episode and if i ran into a wendigo in michigan because dean said sometimes they're in michigan um yeah we're from michigan by the way (laughs) um you know i'd 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 be dead i'd be dead there's no chance i mean but it'd be so quick well no they no they keep you alive no No, girl oh man that'd be that'd be rough yeah i would try to just be like roy and Make it mad, I would so make I would it mad. Just, like be die quick. immediately. Be quick. I mean, unless somebody is definitely gonna come and rescue me, but I doubt it. So I would not want to be one him dang the brother dangling there, seeing that, mm-hmm. seeing his friend be murdered, oh and or the friend being brutally murdered. I right. would rather not have that either. So mm-hmm. you know, I if it came down to me and a Wendigo. It would win. Wendy goes would win, man. <laughs> Half everything in this show would probably kill me. Yeah. I also, I don't know, like, I think Eric Kripke said he wasn't a huge fan of this episode, and I don't really dislike it. I think it's a pretty good episode. It's I mean, a good solid second episode. Yeah, I don't have really any issues with it. Um, this, the editing isn't the best, but... Right. But I think it's got a lot of good content in it, and I... And for the time, it was a good episode. Yeah, I'm going to give it a... A minus. I agree with an A minus grade. A minus, which I think we did something similar. Yeah, I did the same grade for a pilot, and you did. I did an A. Yes. But so that's all we have for Wendigo. And next episode, we will go on to Dead in the Water. Thank you for joining us Thanks, and listening. Bye bye. Bye.